Welcome back to the Ultimate Decades Challenge. I'm super excited to be recording today's episode. I've had a lot of time to think about how I want to handle the famine to make it a little bit more enjoyable for my style of gameplay. And you guys gave me so many different ideas in the comments and I've done a little bit of research on what was really going on during that time period. And I've gotten a lot of ideas so I kind of want to go over that and show you all what I have put together. So Rosslyn right now is in a cellar that I have created for them. This is um, underneath what used to be the horse barn. Since we no longer have a ton of animals, I went ahead and converted this area in the middle to where they can just go down and then the store is locked to just Rosslyn and Kenrick. And so what I have done is this is basically all of the food we currently have. So we're down to a bunch of onions. I went ahead and kept a bunch of apples because they can always just sort of snack on those. I know that's probably not realistic. They would not have access to probably like fresh fruit at that t this time. But just for the game mechanics, I've gone ahead and kept the apples. We have a little bit of flour, some cheese, butter, some boiled eggs, and then a couple of like nuts and seeds in case we need that for making some ingredients. But this is literally all we have left. What I have gone ahead and done is we had a ton of like fruits and vegetables and stuff in our fridge from the different seasons. But right now we are, I think it's the first day of 1316. Yes, it is the first day of 1316. I have gone ahead and adjusted the seasons back down to seven days because I wanted us to move through the different seasons a little quicker to show the passing of time. And so they're about a full year into the famine. Um, it is now winter. It is very bleak and cold. Uh, one of the things that I thought was really interesting that I found out was that the main reason for the famine was because there was a lot of rain. And so there was tons of rain and like the the wheat didn't sprout and the fields were flooded and it just like rained and rained and rained and rained which was actually the opposite of what i thought i had just assumed that like it was a drought and there wasn't enough water but it was actually the opposite so one of the things i've also done is i've removed all of the wild prairie grass from the horse pen as well as i removed the wild prairie grass lot trait because basically the grass was like not growing so my original thought was that oh like the horse will just eat grass but what i've done is i've removed all of that and we basically have no way of feeding the horse right now so we're just gonna see how that goes because i don't know what happens like if they just get taken away or do they die or like what happens but i've left that um, and we can also consider selling them we do still have some chickens i haven't gotten rid of those yet but we will probably start slowly trading those in for meat and of course i will be able to send kenrick out hunting and scavenging for seeds which um i don't think i'm gonna send them fishing because basically people like completely depleted the ponds um fish was really hard to get by there's probably not like a ton of wild game so even if he does go hunting if he comes back with like three items i may just like only let them keep one stuff like that um i may still do the one meal a day we'll see but what i really want the challenge to be more so is like a huge lack of ingredients and access to food um, and then I want them to prioritize feeding all of the girls first um, and taking care of themselves last kind of a thing. Um, or like Kenrick will probably be the one who will sacrifice the most. He'll make sure Rosalind is taken care of so she can take care of the kids. And we'll just kind of see how it goes. I may sort of adapt it as we play through and just see. But those are sort of my initial thoughts of how I want to handle it. Of course, Jasper has already returned back to night training, and so I'm not sure if we'll switch into any other households during this episode. I just want to get a hang of the gameplay with the main household, and then we'll kind of go from there. So I don't have like a huge plan um, of how things are going to go, but we will figure it out together as we play. And so, okay, this says that May and Kenrick have a difficult family dynamic. I'm gonna say no to this, actually. I was gonna say yes and just go with it, but Kenrick and May are so close. This just doesn't feel realistic. Um, but right now, Honora is actually going through a mean streak 
And another thing that I also did um, was I gave everyone, so everyone has the gloomy trait except for Anora. Instead of gloomy, I gave her hot headed. Um, and so Anora's birthday is coming up in two sim days and she'll be a teen. So if she survives that role, my vision for her is like she's gonna start pickpocketing. She's gonna become a little bit of a troublemaker because um, there was a lot of crime and stuff during this time and I can see her kind of going that route at least during the famine times and I think she may even run away. So if you guys have any ideas specific to that type of storyline, just let me know in the comments. But that's kind of what I see for her. And then we'll kind of see what continues to develop for the other girls because everyone has basically just been fighting a lot and they're all very bored. They don't have food, um, all of those different things. So I want to go ahead and get Rosalind going on some food. So what I want to do is like basically plan out what she's going to make in the cookbook. I think to start we're going to maybe do, it's going to say we don't have the ingredients, but I think we're going to do onion soup and to do... Um, eight servings of that we would need eight onions which is already gonna put us like kind of low so I'm gonna have her go ahead and come out to the cellar I just want to make this kind of like really hands-on for myself um, so that's why I've decided to put everything down here um, none of it spoils so we're fine as far as it not being like actually like in the refrigerator so we're just gonna grab eight onions i think we'll probably send kenrick out hunting and see what meat he gets so that was eight i think so she's got that and then now we can go ahead and head back inside and go get everyone fed and already i'm liking this a lot more just because this i don't know this fits my play style a little bit better and um i I'm still gonna have to watch like their hunger bars and stuff, but I just felt like I was so fixated on their hunger bars last episode that I just wasn't focused on anything else. But it's been crazy to see how many messes all of the girls are making because they just have nothing else to do. Adeline, why don't you clean up for us while mom gets food ready? I really need to get a mop override because um, that <laughs> really breaks the immersion. But we'll go ahead and get some onion soup made for everyone. Penelope is definitely the hungriest, but everyone is pretty much in the red, it looks like. Yeah, everyone is already in the red for today. So we will see how this goes. Oh no, we just got the pop-up. Penelope is very hungry. Be sure to feed her before she gets taken away. So some of you suggested that I could turn that setting off with MC Command Center, but I actually think I'm gonna leave it on. We'll see how it goes. All right, mom made some onion soup. You guys eat it all up because we don't have a whole lot left. And so I did go ahead and kind of give them a little bit of makeover. So everyone, I've made them all like a lot thinner to show that they haven't been eating as much. Um, Kenrick, I gave him like some skin details and stuff just to make them look a little bit worn. Like. He's got scratches on his face from like hunting and I feel like there's been crime. Everyone should be good after that meal. Yeah, everyone's hunger bar went om up almost all the way. Penelope is gonna need a lot of attention. Poor thing, where is she? Okay, she's over here. We will have to change that diaper. And then I think before we take care of Penelope, let me go ahead and send Kenrick I'm gonna send him hunting and see what kind of meat he comes back and how much he comes back with if it feels unrealistic. Like I said, I won't keep all of it. All right, so I'm gonna have Rosalyn play with Penelope and hopefully try to get her attention up a little bit while Kendrick is out hunting. And are the girls fighting? Oh my gosh, they are constantly fighting. Okay, Kendrick is back. Let's see what he got okay so he brought back a pigeon a squirrel and a pheasant so i think i'm gonna go ahead and let them keep the pigeon and the squirrel but i'm gonna go ahead i'm just gonna destroy objects so they don't like get any money from that so i'm gonna say he came back with those two items and what i'm gonna do is have him go ahead we're gonna just store everything out in the cupboard and then i think we can actually cook a few things with that, so we've got a squirrel, 
what did I say it was? A squirrel and a pigeon. Okay, yeah, we could maybe make a pigeon pie. We still got a little bit of flour left. Oh, did he get attacked by a bear? Mauled by a bear. Kendrick was lucky to make it out with only a few scratches. Kendrick will be sore for a few days. Yeah, that's why I totally gave him scratches in cast because I just felt like that um, would be really realistic. So he got mauled by a bear. So I was gonna have him play loot for the girls and them all like do some singing together. But unfortunately, he is not able to do that. Uh, let's check. Okay, so the onion soup is good for five hours. Another thing I want to implement with the food is we don't waste any of it, uh, even if it's spoiled. Like, even if it spoils, um, they will eat it. And so hopefully we'll try to, like, so rather than, like, limit them to one meal a day, like, if, there's hung if they're hungry and there's leftovers, I'm going to let them eat it. And we'll prioritize, like, youngest kid to oldest with that, with like based on who's like the hungriest, I guess. Penelope needs a bath. All right, so Penelope is just getting her bath and getting some much needed attention from mom while everyone is out just doing their thing. Um, and I think what I do want to do now that all the girls are pretty much taken care of is I'm gonna send Rosalind out foraging. And then another thing I want to do Oh no, Adeline is now going through a mean streak. Oh my gosh, the girls are really, really struggling, honestly. Um, but one of the things I do want to do is I'm going to continue to like cheat the weather. So like right now it is sunny. I'm going to constantly keep it like cloudy um, just to kind of fit the vibe of that, like what was going on during this time. It was just like really not nice weather for a really long time. So that's like another way that I want to sort of show what's going on during this time. Okay, can I go ahead and clean that up? What's going on with the girls? Oh my gosh, it's all mean interactions. Girls, they are, I wonder what their relationships are all gonna be after this because they are struggling. What is our May doing? Okay, May and Nora kind of like hate each other, but they're also like kind of partners in crime. I'm not gonna lie. I've just been watching them. Okay, Rosalind is back from foraging though so let's see what she brought back oh we got more apples um we got some herbs and some more acorns so let's go put our stuff i'm not going to send them like every single day because like that would i don't want them to like get too much food but honestly this is like taking us through almost the whole sim day so this is going to be a little bit different like gameplay style than what we normally do, it may be a little bit more repetitive um, than like my normal style, but I kind of just really want to get immersed into the detail of um, them having to like gather all of their food and stuff. Let's see, we've got some parsley. All right, so I think they're just gonna get a few chores done for the night. Uh, the snow has finally stopped and so it's warmed up just a little bit. Let's see, Rosslyn's hunger is back in the yellow. Is everyone, nope, girls are still in the green except for May and Penelope. Penelope's already gone down for the night. I think Rosslyn is just gonna get a little bit of laundry finish before they get ready for bed and then I'll just get them all to sleep and then I'll see you guys when they wake up for a fresh new start tomorrow. All right, so Rosalind is waking up for the day and during the night we got a pop-up that she is going through an early midlife crisis and it says that it's the same thing day in and day out with nothing to really show for it. And I think that's just like showing her stress related to the famine, but she's gonna go ahead. We're gonna head back down to the cellar with Rosalind and we do have two spoiled uh, servings left of the onion soup from yesterday so i think Rosalind and kenrick are going to go ahead and have that for the day and she's just going to make up some fresh onion soup for the girls so i think we only need four onions to do the four servings for the girls the girls are like mom mom is it ready we're so hungry and she's like just a minute girls all right so it is ready now go ahead and give the girls the fresh soup okay and Rosalyn and kenrick are gonna go ahead and just have the spoiled one they don't want to waste anything and they want to give the good food to the girls 
So they're gonna have that even though it's not the greatest thing. So it is still making their hunger go up. I think it'll still fill their hunger. They're just not gonna enjoy it. They're gonna get an uncomfortable moodlet from it. Um, but at least it is something to keep their bellies full. Okay, so here's what happens with the horses. It says Dusty is very hungry and if not fed soon, he will be taken away. Make sure he can reach a full, full animal feed or a patch of prairie grass, which we're not gonna offer him because there's no grass. So he is very hungry and may be taken away. So I think now this is where we're gonna have to make the decision to probably sell Favel. So let's see, okay, Rosalind's hunger went all the way up, so that works. So that feels better to me that they didn't waste any of the food and they gave the girls the good food. Kenrick is gonna go ahead and head out here with Favel. And I think we're just gonna go ahead. I'm so sad, I feel like Favel is so beautiful. But we're gonna go ahead, actions. Okay, sell. Are you sure you wanna sell? Favel, you will receive payment and this horse will leave the household. Yes. Bye, Favel. Oh gosh, now what is happening? Well, that was uncalled for. Nora acting maliciously toward May really left a sour taste in her mouth. If it has May wishing Sims could just be nice to each other instead of whatever they want. May dislikes malicious interactions. Of course she does. May is our sweet baby girl. Okay, and it says, oh my gosh, and our bills have been delivered. Okay, so... We have sold Favel, so that is our first loss, but at least Favel did not die. So let's go ahead and go pay our bills very quickly. Still have to pay our taxes, even though we are in the famine. And then we need to go clean the coop. And I just haven't decided exactly 100% how I'm gonna handle the chickens. I think what I'm gonna do basically is I'm not gonna feed them. We'll probably trade them in for meat most likely because there's just not any grain to feed them. Basically the chickens themselves didn't really get diseased is what I read, but there was just like no food to like take care of them. Oh my gosh, the girls keep getting in so much trouble. There's so much drama with them. Blame for bad mood. <laughs> oh my gosh, the drama. Anora, young lady, you do not need to be treating your little sister like that. Oh my gosh, and Penelope's making a mess and using her diaper. You know how to use the potty. Oh, the kids, their needs are good, but they're falling apart. So the meat business is completely shut down. I completely forgot to address the tavern because I was so into like how I was gonna feed them. But one of the things I did forget to address was I have closed the tavern down. Um, it is all boarded up. Every That is just not produced. They're not producing any more meat at the moment. And so what they've had to do is Kenrick is really going to have to step up hit with blacksmithing because since crime has risen so much, there are a lot of people still in need of like weapons and things like that. So Kenrick has really turned back to his blacksmithing and that is how they're gonna support themselves a little bit during this time. Okay, I have actually never once seen Rosslyn pick up the bow, so I imagine like they've been having a lot of discussions about the increase in crime and there's it's really important to them that they're all able to protect themselves. Kenrick needs more help with hunting now that Papa Cedric is no longer with us. So she's starting to work on her archery a little bit as well as, of course, Anora. We'll get Anora out here. She'll come work on her archery skill. And I can't wait for her to be a teen tomorrow. So honestly, I think hunger-wise, everyone is kind of doing okay. Like they're still in the green. I'm so surprised that onion soup is really like sustaining them. It's about 4, 12 p.m. I don't have much else to do with them. So I'm just gonna kind of get them through the rest of the day. And then we'll start tomorrow with aging up Anora into a teen. Cause I think we'll have a lot more that we'll be able to do with her and it'll be a lot of fun. So I'll see you all when they wake up. So it 
is now the next day and Kenrick and Rosalind are both heading out to the cellar to get a few things that they'll need to prepare for Nora's birthday and they notice that some of their food is scattered out by the front door which seems quite odd. So Rosalind is going to go ahead and head down into the cellar to get a closer look and she notices that absolutely everything is gone with the exception of the few things that are lying around on the ground upstairs and she is in complete disbelief that someone has broken into their cellar during the night and now their family really does have nothing so she's just gonna go ahead and gather up the few things that they still have. So Rosalind has come back inside with the few things that she has gathered. So at least we do have a couple of apples. So worst case scenario, we can gift that to Penelope and maybe May if it is needed. But Rosalind is just going to talk to Kendrick and she's gonna let him know, you know, we still have the chickens, so maybe now is the time that we have to consider getting those traded in so that way we have a little bit of meat. And so Kendrick agrees, and of course May is hearing this and she is very sad, but she completely understands. And so what I'm gonna do is have Kendrick go ahead and come out to the chicken coop. It looks like we might have just a few eggs left from this last go round. So we'll get a couple of eggs, uh, hopefully. Oh, we actually got quite a lot of eggs from that. So that was pretty good, but we will go ahead and actually trade them all in for meat. And then I think that will be delivered in the mail the following sim day. Uh, but we'll pretend that they're just doing this at the farm. This is something that Kenrick could definitely handle on his own. Look at Rosalyn back there working on her archery. She is super motivated now. She was working on her archery yesterday, but now that their family has been personally attacked, she really wants to make sure that she can do her part to help them out, whether it's fighting off someone who is attacking them. Look, May is trying too. I love this. Uh, they are all going to start working on their archery, I think. And so that way they're all able to go hunting. They're all able to defend themselves if needed. And I love that. But for right now, it is Anora's birthday still. We're not going to have any cake for her. Everyone is super, super hungry. That meat is not going to be here um, until tomorrow. So maybe even though Kendrick is feeling super uncomfortable, I think he is still gonna go out hunting because he is gonna do whatever he has to do to help take care of his family. So he is gonna go ahead and head out. All right, so while Kendrick is hunting, Rosalyn has gathered up all of the girls and she is just letting them know that the food has all been taken, so there's gonna be a little bit of a change of plans and that she doesn't have anything that she is able to give them for this morning, but luckily they did leave a few things behind. So Anora being the oldest, we have three apples and we are gonna give one to each of the girls. Um, and then Anora is just gonna have to wait, even though it is her birthday, being the oldest of all of the girls, she understands that she needs to put the needs of her younger sisters first. So the three youngest girls got their apples and they are gonna eat that. So little Penelope, they are not gonna starve. They've got their little snack. Dad is out hunting. They will have their chickens very soon. But in the meantime, let's see, I do wanna check to see. Okay, that went up about halfway. So it got them out of the red. That actually helped quite a lot. So we still have a Nora who is very hungry and a very hungry, oh my God. Oh my god! I wish you could see my face right now. What is happening? This is crazy because honestly, I feel like Anora, she's like 12 years old. Like she's turning thir like 13 today. And May is like six, like seven. Like May is like seven years old. Like, and Anora. Anora needs to be careful 
needs to be more careful about what she is doing because she just knocked out a tooth. Hopefully she'll be able to fix it. May and Anora now despise each other. Oh my gosh. Okay, I, I'm like so shocked by that that I do not even have an idea for what the storyline is. Like why do these two hate each other so badly? Like literally it's so interesting too because it's like right after like Anora is starving it's her birthday and like all her sisters just got food and she didn't and she like attacked her sister so I feel like it definitely has to be something along these lines but I already have a plan that if Anora survives her death roll that she is probably going to run away and she's going to start stealing and pickpocketing and stuff just to get by like she's basically going to just like be out on the streets um but that is crazy it may beat her up which is crazy that was wild i think they pro oh my god they oh my god they're fighting again i like never have sims like hate each other so badly this is crazy penelope is just standing there like no big deal oh they are about to get in so much trouble kenrick just got home what is he going to do about this? Kenrick, are you going to do anything about this? He's just like, I'm going to get me a drink. You need... Hold on. They both need to be disciplined. Can we parent, discipline, punish? We'll just give them timeouts. I don't... I mean, I don't know that they really got timeouts in medieval time, but that that is what we're going to do because I want to actually punish them oh my gosh girls what the heck was that absolutely not times are hard enough we are struggling oh my goodness time out girls time out okay yeah they're both in time out now you guys sit and think about what you did we have to stick together as a family if we are gonna make make it through this i want to look at what their moodlets are after that festering bitterness Aw, May is missing her furry friends. It's like the least of her concerns right now. I wonder if May blamed Anora for like the chickens having to get killed or something. And then now they're like fighting. That could be something like, cause she's mad about the animals and it's Anora's birthday and she thinks it's all her fault. Oh my goodness, tempers are high. Oh my God, I'm kind of living for the drama though. That was crazy. Okay, so once they're done with their timeouts, which they are almost done, then I am gonna pull out the death rolls and we will roll for Nora. I'm gonna go ahead and roll before we age her up. We don't have a cake or anything, so I'm just gonna do it manually. So we'll go ahead and do our roll for Nora. All right, so Nora is aging up to a teen. So it is only if we roll a seven that she does not survive. So let's go ahead and roll for Anora. 11, so she does survive. I'm actually so glad because I have plans for her. So we will go ahead and age up Anora. All right, so her trait, self-assured, loves outdoors, hot-headed. Oh my gosh, I, I, I think I'm gonna just leave those for right now, but I kinda wanna give her the public enemy aspiration. I've never done that one before, and that may just be her personality during the actual famine, and then maybe she like, you know, improves and changes a little bit, but um, I'm gonna set that for now to kind of go along with her storyline. Oh my gosh, she's so beautiful! I'm gonna go ahead and give Adora her makeover, and we'll be right back. All right, so here is Adora with her makeover. I have pretty much given her this outfit in all of her categories except for her sleep and her swim. I have given her this because my plan is that she is going to run away. And so basically I feel like she's gonna just leave with like this one outfit that she has and she is gonna do her thing. So let's go ahead and hop into game with the Nora. All right, here is our girl all grown up. I have to see her. I don't know if she's dazed right now, so I don't know if we could do archery, but I have got to see our girl out here now that she can shoot her arrows. Oh my gosh, I bet she is gonna be like an ace archer. Oh my gosh, look at her. I cannot wait. So 
next episode i think i really want to play more about with anora's storyline and see what happens with her when she goes out and does her own thing like what does she get up to does she get into any trouble does she stay safe is she able to feed herself what happens with her so i would love to hear any ideas that you have or if there's anything specific you would like to see with her but i'm really excited to see what happens like does she go try to meet up with jasper what does she do um, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it here with all of the family drama. I had a lot more fun, I think, playing the style of gameplay that I did today with the Famine, so I think we'll kind of continue with a similar dynamic going forward. Now they've lost everything, so next episode we're gonna have to also rebuild up their storage. And so we'll probably play part of the episode from a Norris perspective and part of the episode in the main household. Um, and let me know if you all want me to check in with Jasper, but right now I figure, <laughs> speaking of Jasper, hi Jasper. Um, let me know if you all want to see anything from uh, Jasper's perspective during the famine. I imagine as of right now, like he does still have access to food. So I haven't been playing in that household, but if you'd like to see a little bit more from him, just let me know and we can see if we can work it all in. And I do at some point want to get back into our side household. It's just been a lot of sims to keep up with. So anyways, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this episode here. If you like, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you.